Hello my friends, my poker friends, welcome to Poker 101 for Beginners. In this video, I am going to just uh, teach you a little bit about Texas Hold'em and some of the words that are used and uh, just about the game in general. I also do have a game that was played online. I will decide later if I'm going to have it after this or if I will make a separate video. So let's start out right away. Um, with, uh, Texas Hold'em. Now, right now, I'm just showing you the most powerful five in, uh, cards. It's known as a spade in poker. It, it doesn't matter, but ace through ten, uh, would be the highest thing. And for some reason, spades are known as the most powerful card because of other games and stuff. So, I'm using this as an example. But... Currently, the most popular is Texas Hold'em for Poker. Each player is dealt two private hole cards, which would be these right here, and five shared face-up community cards, then use any combination to make the best hand. So, basically, everyone gets their two cards that are like this, only they would be tur turned over so that you could not see them. This would be, you'd be able to see yours only, and then we would eventually put these cards down. The game is typically played with 2 to 10 players with um, a standard 52 card deck. So that is the deck and yes, the jokers are always taken out of the deck. So basically when the cards are first dealt, everybody gets 2 cards. This Typically there's normally about 5 people so I am going to use that for this video. Next we get to the flop. So the dealer would be putting out the first three cards for everyone to see, and then it would go around with betting. The fourth card is known as the turn card, and the fifth card is known as the river. So basically the first three is the flop, fourth is the turn, and the fifth is the river. Okay, I had to make a quick adjustment. I did put a rug down over the floor due to the nails uh, not being able to pick up the cards. So anyway, now I'd like to go over the poker hand rankings. And I will start at the bottom. Um, the bottom is the highest card. So if nobody has anything when the, when the cards are out, the highest card would win. So, for example, if you have an ace in your hand, you would then win the pot. Um, if nobody had an ace, it would go, like, down as it goes. So if somebody, if the queen was the highest, then that's the one who would win. In all of these hands, and for anything I say, it's always the highest number that's going to win. Ace is the highest, two is the lowest. So, the next one would be if you have one pair so that could be for example if it came out and these were your cards and you had a pair of sevens you would win for having the pair if somebody has a pair of aces or a pair of jacks of course they would then win the hand um the next one would be uh two pair so let's say you have a pair of fives and a pair of jacks and then it does go by this number so if you had a pair of jacks and fives and somebody else has a pair of kings and twos they would then win but um this would be the next one in rank so for the next one it would be three of a kind i just put down three eights as an example and then of course you'd have two random numbers and the higher the better so if you have three aces they're gonna win over the three eights Next one is a straight, and this does not have to be in um, any kind of suit. So, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's quite simple, it just goes in order. The higher the straight, the better. So, if somebody has a straight to the nine, they would beat you in this. If somebody had a straight starting with the three to the seven, you would beat them. Um, the next one would be a flush. That can be, uh, 
any one of them, I used uh, clubs as an example, and for the flush, it goes to the highest number. So if you have a flush to the jack, and somebody else has a flush to the ace, they would win. The next one is a full house. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so here's an example of a full house. Three kings and two twos. So a full house is basically three of one one uh, number and two of another. So again, the highest, the better. So if somebody had three twos and two kings versus somebody that had three aces and... Um, two fives the person with the aces would win so but something like a king would be a very good full house uh okay so the next one is um four of a kind quite simple you want four of the same card which is actually hard to get but um obviously i use nines here but obviously if you have four aces you pretty much are probably going to win the game. It's not guaranteed, but it's very hard to beat. Um, so the next one would be uh, a straight flush. A straight flush is the same as a straight and the same as a flush, just put together. So three, four, five, six, seven, all of diamonds. So they have to be the same suit and they have to be in the number order. Uh, which takes us also to the last one, which is called a royal flush so this would be to um the ace i used spades again just because they're known as the power card but it does not matter so um if you have an ace the 10 in any of the same suit you won that's a guarantee nobody's going to beat that so this is uh what they kind of look like but that is the order so again, it's royal flush, straight flush, four of a kind, full house, flush, straight, three of a kind, two pair, one pair, and then your highest card. Okay, so this is the basic setup again that you would see. And again, I left these two cards so that you can see them only because we are pretending in this video that that would be you. Uh, so... The person to the left of the dealer acts first, and it all proceeds clockwise. It's always going to go clockwise. For those of you that are unsure, that's clockwise, um, and that's how all all the games go. Uh, so the best hand um, in the poker preflop would be pocket uh, aces. As far as some terms then go, so folding is when you lay down your hand and you forfeit any money that you did bet. So you would just and say that you fold. Um, the other would be raising. So that would be increasing the pot, making others put in more money or fold. So let's say you did have this and you are want to put in and this is just an example five more dollars so you bet five dollars into the pot and then everybody has to go around clockwise and also add that amount of money or otherwise they need to fold check is moving on to the next player or card um at the end of a round without adding any more money so if i don't want to bet any money i can just check and then it goes to the next person. However, if they do bet money, then of course you're going to have to also bet what they bet. Um, and then there's check raising. So that is when you check and the next player bets money. And then you follow with a bigger uh, raise. So you check on this. You know you have aces. You know you're, you're doing good. And then he comes along with... You wouldn't see his cards, but let's say he comes along with kings. So he's obviously right now lower than you, but has a good hand. So he throws in $5, let's say. And it's never this small of amount of money, but he throws in $5. So then it comes back to you, and you throw in the 5, and you add an additional 10. 
So that would be an example of check raising. Now, um, this, <laughs> this is an interesting fact, and I, I just read this actually, because I just wanted to get some things straight before I made this video, and this is considered rude. Not by me, it's just considered uh, rude in poker world. However, I have seen this done um, billions of times, so I'm really a little confused on that, but uh, just a little um, extra info for you. Uh, next is bluffing. Bluffing is pretending you have a good hand when you have nothing. Trying to steal the pot from players with better hands. So that would be, and I'm making this basic, I know with the numbers, but let's say you have um, pocket twos and I have pocket aces. And now you go, let's say, all in with your twos, making people try to think that you have something really great when you know that you have the aces and that they are bluffing. Obviously, you don't know all the time if somebody's bluffing, it's, you have to, that, that's the part that, I don't bluff, I'm very against bluffing, I like to make good hands, however many bluff, and they just throw in, I'll show you some examples, and they just throw in the most ridiculous bets for the worst hands. Um, next is the pot, just in case people don't know, uh, so that's the sum of money in the middle of the table from all the players. So that's right here. You're putting in everything, which I'll get to with the blinds, but, um, and then everything that you're raising to, the money goes in there and calculates up until the game is done and we find out who the winner is of that round and that's who gets them that pot. Uh, so obviously there's a new pot for every round. Um, there's also ante. That's mandatory money put in the pot each round. Now, many games do not even have this. However, I do when I play uh, the multi-table games and I'm, you know, playing with hundreds of people and they're switching around. Eventually, that does start. So, an example would be $30. You have to put in $30 for every hand. It is taken out of your money whether you want to or not. Um... So, but again, that's not used in all games, uh, which also kind of brings us to SB, which is small blind, half of the amount of the big blind, which is BB, big blind. So that's the full amount put in at the start of the game to have the money in pot and encourage players to play the rounds. So, there's always going to be two people that are putting money in that's mandatory. So, if they don't have the any in, you're just playing, like, regular, you still are going to eventually have to do a small blind and eventually have to do a big blind. And that also goes around clockwise. Um, and it change, these change each round. I also want to go over some other terms, just in case you hear them. This way you know what they are. And again, this is I'm giving you a very basic poker if you're really not familiar with the game. So, limping. This is when the player only calls the big blind instead of raising, and it's used very often. So, let's say you're sitting here with an ace-king, and you don't know, obviously, what the cards are going to be. So, instead of raising, you just put in whatever the uh, big blind was. Another term used uh, often is a rainbow flop. So that is when um, cards of all different suits are on the flop, the f which is the first three cards. So you've got a three of spades, a king, queen, I'm sorry, of hearts, and a seven of clubs. So this is definitely making it hard to get, um, a flush. Next term I want to go over would be a donkey bet. That's when a player who is not the last to act bets into the last player to raise of the prior betting round. Another one is donkey. That's a bad player makes blatantly, uh, 
bad poker plays and doesn't uh, fold poor hands. An example would be if you had a 3-7 as your pocket and um, they were not even of the same suit and you do not fold. Many people would just fold this because it's such an awful uh, pocket that they would fold it. Uh, so that would be another example of this. Another term that you'll hear very often is, quote, the nuts. So that is the best hand by looking at the cards on the table. Here's an example. There is also a golden rule, and that is avoid playing too consistently. Next one is poker fish. That is a weak or inexperienced player, someone who plays 40% or more of their hands. Uh, next one's quote rivered and that is when you lose the pot when the opponent catches a lucky card on the river. So let's say you right now are winning this round and then the river's thrown down and you now have a straight. That would be an example of winning on the river. One of the most famous uh, words that I've seen um, in tournaments and definitely online is go all in. So that is when you raise with all your money. So you're putting immediately all your money out there no matter what, what it is and if you lose and the other pe person or people have the same amount as you and they win, then you lose all your money. If you put down, let's say you're betting $1,000 and go all in, and another person goes all in with 50, you then would obviously get your money back and it would be 50 against the 50. Next uh, word is goat. Uh, that is greatest of all time. This is an argument by Ivy uh, over Hellmouth. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar, um, so Phil Hellmouth is known as, uh, quote, the poker brat. He is a six-year-old man from Wisconsin, and Phil Ivory, Ivy is a 47-year-old man from California. He's also an actor. Um, they're just very famous poker players uh, and have won uh, many things. My personal favorite would be Tom Duan, uh, also known as Durr, D-U-R-R-R-R. -R -R -R. He is 38 from New Jersey. I am also from New Jersey. Um, he uh, just came out of nowhere pretty much from playing online when he was younger and then became a pretty huge poker player. As I said before, the ace is the highest and the two is the lowest. Another term is BBJ, and that stands for Bad Beat Jackpot. Um, so it's when a very good hand loses to an even better hand. So an example is you have a straight and you lose to a flush. You have a flush and you lose to a full house. Happens quite often and has happened to me many times is not fun. Also, um, calling time or some games, especially online, have a time limit. So when it's your turn, you only have a certain amount of time to decide. Otherwise, your uh, cards automatically get folded and you uh, cannot win that pot. Okay, so I'm sure many of you know this, but um, like I said, if you're new to poker, the worst hand in poker is the 2-7 offsuit. So, uh, there are also many games that people make side bets where if you have the 2-7, it's set before the game. If you have a it's if you have a 2-7 or are able to either, you know, get a good hand from it or bluff and you win, there's a side bet, and people have gotten money from it. Um, it's very common. Uh, you cannot do it online, but it's very common when you watch 
them uh, at tournaments. Uh, okay, some other worst hands are these. These are the worst hands, um, or worst pockets that you can have. Uh, and again, they're all offsuit. That is very important. They offsuit makes a big difference. Not that, uh, if they're the same suit, that's the greatest, because they're still in low numbers, but offsuit. So, like I said, the 2-7, followed by the 2-8. Okay, next we have, uh, the 3-8. The three seven, two ten. Uh, then it, we would go to the two nine, three nine, and four nine. And again, they're all offsuit. So these are the worst cards you can pretty much start out with. Okay, and for my last terms before you get into your game is, just in case somebody says these, then at least you will know um, exactly what they mean. So, very often, if you have um, pocket aces, people say pocket rockets or the bullets. For kings, they say the cowboys for queens they say the ladies and i'm going to do two of the lower cards the three and the two so the three they say crabs because of the way it looks that's where it got the name from and um for twos um ducks so i just thought i'd give a quick lesson of exactly how you do everything with poker and the terms and then I can also show you some examples from games I have played. Okay guys, it's time for shirts again. So look, I made a new one. Check this out. Just came in the mail. Still fold and everything. Wait. <laughs> How can I get you guys to see it? There you go. So, this one's much less personal. It's uh, pills on top of the <laughs> death card, ace of spades. And it says, um, don't let your mind be taken from you. So, and of course, any color, any whatever. And then I got the rest on print because uh, I can't buy them all. So just follow the ocean air. Happiness can come from a good book. You do not need other influences. And it's a fake book, but I mean, it looks cool, right? This one was Atlantic City, just take one step at a time. And this one was made here with my hand, same nail polish, and it's make sure you have control of your money or it will control you. That's a picture of my hand on money. And the green is for the money. So, I don't know. Check these out. Maybe you'll like these. These are much less, um... They're not as personal, like they're not like uh, like my dog and hamster and stuff like that. These are really based on things that go on in life and things you might think about and things and things that, you know, might might apply to you, um, except for the two that were obviously Atlantic City, New Jersey. Um, so, I don't know. Check them out. I'm sure I have my uh, code already down there. Thanks, guys. Okay, so the last thing I want to say, and this isn't really with cards, it's uh, more so the people, it's bad poker etiquette. So, um, rude or mean, don't take it out on the dealer, don't um, swear, don't ruin your cards. Uh, so that's more if you're in like, um, like a live game at like a casino or, you know, with friends, I guess. More so though with like a casino, I would say. 
if you're in New Jersey, you have Atlantic City, there's plenty of uh, places where you can go to play poker. Uh, so, when you're online, there is also stuff that's like, you can say like, nice hand, you can say good game, which is very common to say at the end, when the person goes out. So the person that goes out normally says good game, and the person that sends them out says good game. Um, it's just pop proper etiquette. Uh, you don't want to, there's online, they have like disease taking too long. Um, that's weird. They have a laughing thing, and people use that to be rude. So those are just examples of uh, poker etiquette and how you should handle yourself. Uh, also, don't panic try you if you're doing if it is in person I do online but and I have done in person if you're doing in person it's very important that you don't give away your hand with your feet with your expressions or anything uh online pretty much easier because you, you just don't say anything uh they don't let you talk on some of the games the game that I play the most you can't talk what it is is they give you like eight different things that you could say and that's it and it's like like I said like good game and that would be a thing you could press it but you couldn't like type hi how are you like you can't do things like that so um you do want to practice that uh it's really frowned upon I Phil Hellmouth is probably the funniest to watch uh go on YouTube and you can watch him and you'll see like how bad he gets with uh perfect etiquette but is really actually entertaining. He's an excellent player. It's just that, uh, yeah, poker brat. So, um, I hope these help you. And I'm going to, I still haven't decided if I'm going to add the clip of the online game. Uh, I might make a separate video for that. So, uh, that'll be a part B, or I'll add it onto this, uh, depending on how long this is. All right, I hope this helped you. And if you're new to poker and have any questions, feel free to comment below and I will answer them right away. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Okay guys, welcome back to Poker 101. This is day two. So, now I'm just going to show you some uh, real examples from a real online game. I will be Natty Lights uh, for all of these, uh, I will be either a picture of this bear, or I was originally a uh, picture of a girl with black hair, but either way, I will always be at the, uh, very bottom, uh, of the screen. So, first, let's just go over the games that I was talking about. So, when I said that you can play with, um, multiple people, so that would be a cash game, Sit and go was when I was referring to five people. Multi table was when I was referring to uh, possibly hundreds, three hundred, and world tour is uh, is a different type of uh, special game they have on here where you can uh, build up money and rank and then weekly rank. Okay, so I did mute the sound just for so there's no copyright or no problems. Um, so this is how the table would be. Um, you have five people, uh, including yourself, and it goes around the table as far as playing. So as the game goes, uh, obviously once you're out, you're out. So on this uh, round, we're down to four people, including myself. Again, I'm the, at the bottom with $460 and a pair of aces. This is a playback, so you normally would not see their cards. Um, this is just showing, so the first, you, I'm showing you how you would get, you know, your pocket aces. That would be the two cards that would be face down. And then across the board, the first three that came, that was the example that I was using uh, for the flop. The fourth one was the turn, and the fifth one was the river. So again, this is the flop. This is the turn, and 
and this is the river. And like I said, you can um, check or you can fold or this person's betting. So then you have to either follow through with their bet or you fold and give them the pot. Uh, this is also showing how there are blinds and the blinds are set on a timer. So it says next and it will show you how long you have until uh, the blinds go up again and again. Big blinds and small blinds. So when a person goes out, you see them and then their name disappears and it's down to you and the other person. This is raising when you see the bet. Um, these are the blinds. So again, they change, but there's the timer and this is showing. So the first number is um, the small blind, and then the second number is the big blind. So for this, it's now down to two people, so you automatically um, are in the blinds. But when it is more than two people, like you can see here, it shows who has the B big blinds right there and then the small blind and it will show it and then it shows the dealer and then the money right there is the pot which is the money that you're trying to win for that hand okay so this is an example of bluffing normally you wouldn't see his cards but see how he has a king four I have pocket aces which again was the strongest hand to start with so let's not pay attention to these two because they're folded. So it's between me and him now. He has five seventy. I have four hundred dollars. The pot's already at seven twenty, and he raises five seventy all in, and is bluffing. This is an example of bluffing. He has nothing but a king high. I have a pair of aces, and then there was a pair of six on the board, so I automatically then win the pot, which puts him down to one hundred and ten dollars, and uh basically then he ends the game because he doesn't have enough money and it puts me up to 1640 okay so next i'd like to show you an example of the most powerful um hand that can't be beat now this is a royal flush you want the royal flush to the ace however i do not have any examples but i will show you a royal flush nine through king of spades My picture will change because this is an older um, game. So I am at the bottom right there with the king and ten of spades. And there it is. Nine, ten, jack, queen, and king of spades. So this is a uh, royal flush. Again, it should have been... The best would be to the ace of spades. It's just um, this one just goes to the king, which is still pretty much impossible to beat. So it's a straight flush. Okay, my next clip is of going all in, which is what I talked about. Now, this is again an old one of me, so it will be a different picture than I normally use. So I am the girl right here and I have a pair of aces again. He has a six and a seven and a queen and a ten and they're raising. Another ace hits the board so I have three aces which is a very very good hand and they're just bluffing and they both go all in. Uh, I believe it was around like 40,000 and th this was fake cash. So I win with three of a kind, which is the three aces. I get all the money, and they are both knocked out of the game. Okay, so like I said yesterday, it goes royal flush, straight flush, four of a kind, full house, flush, straight, three of a kind, two pair, one pair, highest card. So if you have a flush, again, it goes to the person with the highest card. I'll now show you an example. 
See, that's me with the bear again. The queen and the king. Six king, ten of diamonds on the board. So another diamond comes up. So all of us now have a flush. However, this person has it to the eight, to the jack, and I had it to the queen. So therefore, I win all the money. Okay, so for my next example, I'm going to show you um, a straight and also how somebody can start with the best hand and it can change as you play. So sometimes betting, you can knock people out and then they don't get the chance to make the good hand. Sometimes they still stay in. It all depends. So this is me again with a six king and the person at the top has a queen nine of clubs. Um, this person already folded, so it's just between us. So, they have a pair of queens with a 9, 10, jack, queen. So, obviously, by this point, I already made the straight, um, to the ace. And this is how you then take the money and win with a straight. Okay, so for this hand, I got a 4-9. Uh, which we um, talked about yesterday. One of the worst hands. So it's best to just fold from the start. This way you don't lose the blind money or anything that is raised. Okay, my next example is why you have to be careful because you never know what people have in, like, where they could have pocket anything. So, they could have pocket aces, anything. So, you can't just go by the board. So, for this hand, I had a king eight. So, and it was of the same suit clubs. But I did not know that the other person had pocket jacks. So looking at the board, having a king and an eight, eight paired then with a king high is a good hand. However, with him having pocket jacks, not knowing it, that is how another way how you can lose a hand. Okay, for this next one, it's going to be an example of BBJ. Bad beat, jackpot. So this is when a very good hand loses to an even better hand. I, again, this is a multi, um, this was a bigger table. It was uh, a total of 153 people. So that's why the people are spread out differently. I, again, is at the bottom with the jack nine. And I did change these colors normally clubs are not green and diamond and hearts are not red it's black and white but um this makes it easier to see so as you can see there's an 8 7 10 on the board and there is a person to the right that has a 9 and jack of hearts so they have a straight however i have a flush so they lose due to me having one better. Okay, so for my next one, I'm going to show you how you can't always rely on the fact that you have a good pocket hand. So I have pocket queens, which is one of the best hands you can have. However, there are many things that can beat that. So you look at the board, you see the 4, 3, 10, and you're figuring, well, you still have the highest going by the board so you bet money because it's normally what you do when you have a good hand especially when your cards are higher than the cards on the board now the problem is here there's two spades 
So all that you need is to have a river spade and on the turn of the river, once again rivered, then they become, they both get flushes, one to the ace, and that automatically would make you lose because you now only have a pair of queens. Okay, here's another example. I have the best uh, pocket pair of aces. Now, you can look around the table and again, normally you would not see this. And there's also a person that has pocket tens and a person that has pocket nines. They're not bad hands to start out with. However, they're very risky because there could be somebody with a higher number. So just the nine and ten alone is a very small difference, but you don't know if people have a good pocket hand. There's not you don't often get pocket hands like that so I mean as you can see there's a king three five three jack queen ten seven so it's not normal to have a case where you have three people all with pocket hands of a number but it is risky and then if you look at the board there's also two jacks so had the person on the right with the jack queen played then that would have been a whole nother story too because they would have won with the three jacks versus the two aces, two kings, or two tens, I'm sorry, or two nines. But in this case, I ended up winning with the two aces. Now, another thing is, all right, that was pocket fours, but I want to do this one. I have pocket jacks. So if you do start out with such a strong hand you may want to raise which i did of 320 to try to knock out other players who don't want to risk it so you don't have to worry about them then in this case they could end up with a two and then they would have had three twos so you're eliminating some people because they will fold and then you have a better chance of winning i did however go all in so it was jacks against sixes and then there was the pair of twos, which did not come into effect. One more thing I would like to show you guys is a full house. So I started this round, and I'm the bear at the bottom with a three king. The other person has a four jack, which again, you don't see. So on the board now, I have a pair of twos and three threes. That is a full house. This one is a low full house. However, he has nothing. So, oh, and then I got a king. So I'm sorry. So now I have a full house with a pair of kings and three threes. That is an example of a full house. He then is down to no money. So I win with a pair of tens. Okay, poker friends, I hope this helped you. I am going to add this that you studied into my video from yesterday to show you actual examples. Again, this was online um, fake cash poker. Uh, it, I do not want to show you know games that are based on actual gambling with real money. Um, but I hope these examples helped and helped explain some of the stuff that I went over yesterday. Again, any questions or comments, feel free to send them below and I would be happy to answer them. That's me, Natty Light. That's my name in poker. Alright guys, thanks for watching.